All right, guys. I know the title looks weird. Okay. I know. But let me, I can explain. <laughs> I can explain. Okay. Um, so there's been a mix up in terms of what I count. So I know yeah, it says 900 hour video, basically <laughs> 900 hour update. You're like, how do we just skip 300 hours? We didn't really skip 300 hours. So I went back. Um, it's just, I kind of, my definitions of things differ from everyone else's definition of things. So I'm like, okay. So I went back into the, into the video. I went back to my previous videos and luckily I keep track of my hours so I can see exactly when everything kind of went wrong. Everything went screwy, a little bit screwy after the 500 hour video and the 600 hour, obviously. So what ended up happening was the, it, this all stems from how, yeah, let's, let's back up. This all stems from how I track um, what I count as immersion for the different things. So I count active immersion as me watching things. So if, if I'm watching something with sound video and, li you know, so like watching content, that's my, what I call it, active immersion, which is really just, you know, general, like, I guess that's just my definition of active immersion. Then you have reading, which is reading. So if I'm watching anime with subs, if I'm watching anything with subtitles really at all, that's reading. Then you have passive listening, which passive listening I counted as my definition was if I'm listening to something, period. If I'm listening to something and I have like basically 90% concentration on that thing, then I count that as passive listening because it's like, I don't, I don't know. I just, because, but okay. So that's what I count as passive listening. But now a lot of people are telling me on the Discord, they're like, no, that's actually active listening. Passive listening is when you're listening to something, you have less than <laughs> like 90% comprehension. I'm like, well, oh, well, see, I never did that kind of passive listening. Well, I remember from day one because it seemed kind of useless. I'm like, if I'm going to do any kind of passive listening, it's going to be I'm going to be sitting down listening to something or like driving or doing something extremely repetitive. So I never... I rarely did passive listening to begin with, so it was wasn't really a big problem until audiobooks. Yeah, audiobooks is when I started actually like audiobooks and like streams. So I started listening to streamers and audiobooks while I was working, and my my job is very repetitive, so I'm able to maintain roughly ninety percent, ninety five percent comprehension. You know, so obviously my attention dips here and there, but for most of all, I'm able to con I'm able to pay attention to uh, what's going on because my job is fairly repetitive. So. And that happens, and also the fact that my level got to a point where I can actually listen to things, and for the most part, I understand them. So things got in more enjoyable. So I did more of it because it was enjoyable. So then that's where the mix-up happened. Where my definition of passive listening, I basically wasn't counting that in my total hours tracker, um, because it just kind of felt useless or felt weird. But then someone was like, "No, that's actually immersion. Like active. That's active listening, and that's actually uh, important part of immersion." And I was like. Oh, so I went back and fiddled with my um, graphs and, and started kept tracking my hours using that um, or adding those on. And I realized, I, whoa, I'm at like 900 something hours. I'm like, or I was at like, when I did this, I realized it was like eight something, 890 or 880. I'm like, oh, geez. So I'm like almost at 900 hours. Holy crap. Right. So that's good in the sense that I figured I found that out because like I'm actually further along than I thought I was, which is great because <laughs> at the end of this, my whole new year's resolution was to hit a thousand hours this year, which to me was going to be like, not a monumental task, but like I had to be kind of on my game, you know, to, to hit that marker. But now it's like, Oh, you know, I got like 60 hours left. <laughs> Woo. And I got six, six months left. Woo. <laughs> and like, okay. So now I'm that, that New Year's goal is just kind of whatever. Um, New Year's resolution, I, I might say. So, yeah, that happened. So I just wanted to clarify that. That's why the title of the video is weird because it's like, whoa, this guy kind of just like jumped up 300 hours and no video. Like, I've no. So, I went back to, I need to clarify this too. So, I went back at my 500 hour video, I was basically at 600 hours. And at my 600 hour video, I was at 
like or no yeah i was at like 750 right so now this is my 900 hour video really is like yeah i'm sorry <laughs> Yeah, because, I, I mean, the other passive listings seemed kind of useless. It seemed like there was, like, no point to it, really. So, I just never thought that it was, um, yeah, I never really thought it was a point to it. So, yeah, here we are. Okay, now that the, now that the whole mix-up is out of the way, we're going to go start going back to, we're going to talk about my reading and listening. Um, so, bringing back up audiobooks, yeah, I discovered audiobooks are a thing. And they're freaking amazing. So I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. Really only three. But I've listened to one of them twice. So you can count that. Um, so I've been listening to audiobooks a good amount in Spanish. Um, not a crazy. I haven't been going crazy with it. But it's just like a new element that I can use. I can employ when I'm at work. So that's a great thing. Um, also streams like I've been using streams, not recently, but I, I was mainly around the 600 hour mark or around the 500 hour mark. I was mainly, I was listening, this was before I discovered audiobooks and I found out that like, whoa, I can actually, I basically just listen to like Mr. Solace live streams and like uh, a couple other YouTube streams. Also like AJET, um, one guy made an AJET update video. I listened to that while I was at work. So again, I'll, I'll, I kind of all this passive listening, even though, you know, we've been through that. We already know. So I've discovered audiobooks. They're a thing. They're dope. I recommend you check them out. Specifically, when you get to the level where you can actually enjoy them. Once you get to that level, which is, I guess, two C. Yeah, like late two C. You know, find a find a voice actor you really like that you like really like their stuff. Um, there's also a problem with voice actors, and because a lot of audiobooks are from Spain, and that's kind of annoying because it's like, ah, uh, you know, you're trying to listen to. I, in my, I mean, just, I kind of prefer the accent from Spain. I mean, not from Spain, from Latin America. I could kind of prefer more of the Latin American accents. Um, so the fact that like 90, it feels like at least 90% of the voice actors, of the people making audiobooks are from Spain is kind of annoying. But other than that, it's like, it's cool. Um, but other than that, so we're talking about my level comprehension, my comprehension level. Um... When it comes to my comprehension level, I've noticed that things... I feel like it's kind of the same. Well, I would say, like I said, generally, mostly like a level five. When it comes to, like, YouTube, generally, certain accents I'm still going to have issues with. In terms of my, like, home domain or the stuff I'm most comfortable with, mostly level five. Um, yeah, pretty much stuff I'm comfortable with, mostly level five. Stuff I'm not comfortable with, level four. Accents that I really struggle with or in more material that is really out of my range, three at best, right? So it, it just obviously varies from speaker to speaker. But generally, I would say level five when it comes to most stuff I'm confident or comfortable with. And I've also noticed that my when my ability to hear like overhear people in Spanish, right? When there's Spanish people um, near me, my ability to hear them has greatly increased. Right, where it's like previously it was just gibberish. Now it's like, for the most part, like I can understand or at least follow somewhat. Or there's a, it might just be gener gibberish too. It just depends on the person and the distance and how much background noise and etc. But I notice I've been when I've been in restaurants and stuff like that, I've been able to like more be able to kind of overhear a bit more than I pretty much ever have because I've never been able to overhear anybody in the past. It's always just been gibberish. But just my general ease of and ability to understand. It's just more comfortable. I don't have to strain my brain as much. I still kind of do out of habit, but a lot of times I really don't have to. It just kind of, you know, comes with the territory. When you've been, like, focused and concentrating on something for so long that it gets difficult to hear. Um, also, I want to show you, um, I got, there's a really good workflow I've been using to look up words on my phone. And using the Galaxy phone, you're basically able to, um, like, read articles and things like that and just have Spanish dict in the corner. Um, I'm going to pull that up and show you as well. So, yeah, we're going to show you that in a little bit. Okay, now we're going to get into what I've been watching. So, um, one thing that I've been watching, I've been watching a few more native shows. Not a lot. I still need to watch a lot more native content. Still haven't gotten into it. Something I need to uh, do more of. Even, I've been saying this for, like, the last four update videos, but... You know, you know, guy can't get enough of his anime. So, yeah, I need definitely to watch more native shows. 
Um, it's definitely, I have a crap ton of them saved on Netflix, so definitely get into that, but either way. Um, but, you know, your boy's still watching his anime. It's, it's anime, it ain't nothing like anime in Spanish. Or, I mean, you know, there's also like anime in like Japanese, but ain't nobody worried about that. Um, watching a bunch of anime in Spanish, you know, really enjoying it, really hype. It's dope. I recommend, for those that are apprehensive about watching anime in Spanish, don't worry about it. It's great. You'll progress in language. You'll have fun. Also, um, Crunchyroll. If, if you want to watch anime in Spanish dubs, anime, Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll. Main reason being, I have a, like a, a playlist save with, in Crunchyroll, and I have, what, 69? Nice. Anime save so far, almost basically 70. They're, and they're, they're releasing some every season. They're releasing, you know, summer, new, I mean, summer, winter, spring, fall, whatever. Every They have a new list of anime being added in, you know, being dubbed and added to Crunchyroll. So, highly recommend you watch Crunchyroll. If you... Um, if you're more of a beginner or you're early in the process, still watch it. You can actually pull up the subs. Um, it's dumb how they have this set up, but the, they basically have the dub. So if you're watching the Spanish dubbed, you can't pull up Spanish subs. You can't pull up any subtitles if you're watching a dub in Crunchyroll. So what you have to do is on one tab or one screen, pull up the dub and on the other screen, pull up the sub you know, Japanese sub, so make the language Japanese, pull up the subtitles that way, and I promise you, 95% of the time, 90% of the time, the subs match the audio of the Spanish dub, it's dumb, I know, Crunchyroll, fix your shit, but either way, it's all we got, if you don't know what they're saying, I have, I have, luckily I have three monitors, so I have the Japanese version with the Spanish subtitles and the Spanish dubbed, and I'll be able to, if I miss anything or whatever, struggling to understand what's going on, I pull that up or skip to that part of the video, boom, oh, he said this word, and I rewind it, oh, yep, he said that word, matches perfectly, so for those of you that need to learn or that are, you know, want to still check your stuff, or maybe earlier on, or even just begin, or maybe more, you know, people that are further along and just don't know what they said, boom, check your subs. Um, I mean, Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll, 100% recommend it. You can, they got a lot of content on there. If you learn Spanish, Italian, German, um, I don't know how much Russian stuff they got on there. Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, German, Portuguese. They got a crap ton of anime for us out there. In English, too, if you're learning English, recommend Crunchyroll, too. Um, uh, yeah, I recommend even paying for it. But, yeah, so, also, I've been rewatching a lot of anime, or I keep saying a lot, a few. I've been rewatching a few anime here and there, um, just to see how I've progressed, and man, progress has been crazy, I just remember when I'm watching them, I'm like, I remember this whole part, I had, I rewinded it a million times, and I had no idea, I can never understand what they said, For I rewind this specific part, five, six, seven, ten times, no idea what they said, it was just gibberish, and now I'm just listening to it first through, Oh, this was, and I'm like, wait a minute, I used to not know what that meant, so, Pretty hype about that. Pretty dope. Where it's, it's it's really rewarding, really gratifying seeing that like I can now understand seeing all those parts where I couldn't understand. That's why I like rewatching old content. It's like when I just do it, I do it in English anyway. I like to rewatch movies from time to time. But I recommend rewatch something um, even that you enjoyed or whatever. Rewatch it six months later. Like you know, maybe not the same thing every six months, but pick a video that you watched six months ago and rewatch it again. You know, six months later, or pick a you know, save a video specifically to watch it six months later, something like that. Recommend it. If you, it's always a big motivation, uh, motiv boost of motivation. Um, anytime you get to do that, so highly recommend you do that. All right, now we're on to the output part. Um, yeah, everyone's favorite part, I guess. So. Where I guess I'm going to talk about my what I want to do with output, where, where am I going, how I feel about it. Um, and so far, what I want to do with output is I want to increase the amount of output I have. Because I feel like, given what I can understand, I should be able to speak better than I can, right? Which I can speak, but it's... I feel I feel like I'm crossing like the... What is it? The, what do you call it? The, is that the 99th parallel? You know, the border between like North and South Korea, I feel like I'm kind of, when I'm speaking, I feel like I'm kind of stepping over there, like stepping across it, you know, every time I speak. So it's like, I can speak and I can speak with, in moments, a great, with a great deal of fluency or fluidity, but I still feel like I'm, you know, hitting landmines from time to time. And I want to, with, with basic things, so it's not like I'm, I'm struggling. I don't really 
worry about when I'm struggling to, to express, articulate some really abstract concept or explain something that's very technical to somebody. I'm not, I'm not worried about those moments. I'm worried about when I'm like, dang it, how do I say I'm about to go to the shower in 10 minutes? You know, like something simple. It's like, ah. so that's kind of where I'm at. There's moments where I sound and I feel very fluid when I'm speaking and feel, feel very articulate. And we're talking about these super, you know, you know, government things or, you know, what happened with somebody was in a club the other day and how, what happened, funny story of my, um, with, that happened with me and my brothers when we were young and, you know, and, and then it's like, oh, how do I say I need to go to the bathroom for five minutes, you know, or give me, you know, five minutes because I need to take a break. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, for some reason I'm tripping up on this, but like I explained this. So it's like super inconsistent, um, in terms of like what I'm able to express with, um, with fluidity. So I don't feel like I'm fluent, but I feel like I'm close to being fluent, if that makes any sense. Um, so that's why I'm going to drastically start ramping up the amount of hours I output and I'm going to hop on to, um, discord and have more discord, um, meet and greets and, uh, meet and greets. It sounds like I'm famous or something, but you know, just hop on a discord and, and talk shit with other people basically. Um, and speaking of discord and talking shit with other people, I actually did that for the first time in a year. I hopped on a year ago, had a great time, kind of, you know, English, Spanglish a bit, kind of, you know, I don't know, we had a great time, but I had, I had to do a lot of faking it till you make it, right, uh, I had to do, you know, like, someone said something to me, had no idea what they were saying, but I didn't, I didn't want to feel like an idiot, or I felt like an idiot, so I want, didn't, but I didn't want them to know I felt like an idiot, so I just pretended like I, you know, yeah, I'm gonna just replying something that I'm vague enough that I hope you think I understood you, because I definitely didn't understand you. Um, so because of that, like it was, but it was, it was fun, great time, but now I hopped on a discord call, not with the same people, but you know, just in discord with like three native speakers and we were chopping shop and it was great. And it was like, I understood everything that everybody was saying. And it was amazing. Like I understood everybody on like my comprehension was like level five, right? The whole time, the whole conversation. And we, we were talking for like two hours, three hours, two hours. We we're talking for like two hours. It was great. And it's like, man, this is like. Jurassic, you know, and it's like, I was able to say what I wanted to say. I didn't really have to rely on English. I was, you know, I was able to talk about various things and express myself. But again, there was a few times where I would kind of like, dang, how do I say this? And then I had to kind of say in a super roundabout way. Um, one thing they didn't know in terms of, they said I spoke well, but my, what do you call it? Um, you now in agreement. Yeah, yeah. Now in agreement is it off. So it's like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. So like, you know, using feminine adjective with a masculine noun and vice versa and whatever. Yeah, that stuff is off. So, okay, got you. But they said for the most part, I was able, I sounded really well. There wasn't, I mean, I sounded really good. There wasn't too many, there wasn't very many errors that they heard the whole time. I was like, oh, that's appreciated. I, I, I mean, I feel like they still might've heard errors. They just, there weren't enough there weren't any that were egregious enough egregious enough for them to like comment but i don't know i guess the jury's still out on that um but other than that um yeah i really enjoyed that really hype really want to really ramp up my um my my i talk lessons i'm going to take more outside lessons i want to take like three a week and then talk to um then hop into more discord calls more often right so i basically want to drastically wrap uh ramp up the amount of time I'm outputting and, and kind of like bridge that gap. Cause I still had, don't have compared to my immersion hours. I have like 900 immersion hours, but in terms of the actual time I've actually spent speaking to somebody, it's only been like 30, right? Cause I think I have like 31 hours with my teacher and even a few, you know, talks with people. So at best 40, which probably not 40, probably 35 hours of actual conversation practice compared to 900 hours of immersion. So, or over 900 hours of immersion. So it's like, it's kind of really imbalanced. So I want to put in like, I want to at least put in like a hundred hours of input. Um, I'm not input. I'm so used to saying input. It feels weird to say it the other way. I'm about to put in a hundred hours of output. Oh God. <laughs> and, um, we'll see. Uh, I'm super hyped about, you know, where I'll be after like a hundred hours of output. So, um, yeah, that's the plan for that. And, uh, yeah, supongo que ahora debo hablar en español, creo. Pero no sé que es un poco raro, es un poco raro uh, tratar de hablar a frente de la cámara, por ejemplo, eh, porque es, es como 
no sé, es un poco... Me da miedo un poco, pero... O me pone nervioso porque, porque es una... Es una, no sé... Oh, creo que debo hablar... Necesito hablar sobre, sobre mi, mi progreso en el idioma y cómo había logrado ese nivel y, y, y tal. Y, pero um, sí, me gusta mucho el hecho que ahora creo que puedo hablar un poco más... Eh, o, o, de, que puedo manejar el idioma decente, creo. Pero también es como... Sí, puedo más o menos decir lo que quiero, pero aún me cuesta, me cuesta un poco hablar. Eh, y también, no, es un poco raro, no sé qué, ok, ¿qué debo hacer? Supongo que solo necesito, eh, solo tengo que hablar sobre las cosas que había hablado durante el video. Es, es fácil, pero... ¿Por qué no? Perdón, <risa> había cortado el video, pero ahora tengo que hablar o continuar a hablar uh, <risa> y hacer esa ese demostración de mi output. Eh, de mi output, sí, pero um, creo que cuando habla con, eh, con las personas en el servidor de Discord, me había... Eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Um, me había dado... No... Um, no es aliento, es como... Ah, no, no sé la, la palabra por... Habían dicho muchas cosas buenas sobre mi, mi habilidad de hablar y hace, sobre el nivel que tengo y, y tal, pero... Uh, y también era muy chistoso, era, e ese momento era muy chistoso y mu era muy divertido, eh, porque, porque la primera vez, la primera vez en mi, en, en, en ese camino de aprender o de, de aprendizaje, yo podría hablar y comunicarme con facilidad, más o menos, con los, con los hispanohablantes de nativos y, y de hecho pu pudiera podía entender todo eh, de lo que me dije, de lo que me dicen, me dijen, me dijeron, sí. Entendí todo lo que me dijeron, sí, pero sí. como puedes ver, es como me cuesta un poco eh, conjugar y hacer todo eso. Pero me gusta mucho, me encanta el hecho que podría eh, lograr a ese nivel. Y de hecho, creo que ahora, ahora mismo, puedo... Eh, decir que, o puedo proclamar que, que tengo, ahora tengo la habilidad de hablar el, el español, sí. Eh, por fin puedo hacerlo, puedo proclamarlo, eh, pero porque en el pasado no me sentí que pudiera decir esas cosas porque es, era, por, eh, era muy, porque era muy difícil de hablar y decir lo que quiero. Y pero, y, mmm, y pero también habían muchas personas que me dicen que, o que me di, que me dijen, que, que me dijeron, ay, qué, qué fastidio, ay, pero eh, <ríe> que, que puedo hablar más eh, el idioma, eh, y para pensar que por fin yo puedo tener muchas conversaciones con personas interesantes y ay y eh, compartir mi, mis ideas o mis eh, mi historia con otras personas que nunca podía eh, que, que nunca había o que nunca tenía la, la, la habilidad de hacerlo en el pasado el hecho que ahora puedo hacerlo es, es algo muy... Uh, ¿Cómo se dice? Gratifying, pero... Bueno, al menos me pone... Eh, me siento muy orgulloso. Eh, y sí, creo que más o menos era eso era todo. No recuerdo exactamente qué... 
qué quería decir, pero porque ya había, ya dice, eh, ay no, ya dije en español o en inglés, de hecho, eh, es, es, es muy raro. Creo que cuando estoy hablando con una persona puedo hablar un poco más fácil, eh, un poco más fácilmente, pero cuando tengo que hablar con, eh, al frente de, de, de la cámara es, es más, es más extraño, es más, no sé, es, es, requiere mu un poco más de energía, pero cuando, cuando hablo en inglés no era tan difícil o no me cuesta tanto hablar al frente de la cámara en inglés, pero en español es una, es una cosa diferente. Eh, sí, hay otra, hay otra cosa. ¿Qué más, qué más que quiero decir? Mm, no sé. Hay otra cosa que aprendí durante ese... Ese, ese viaje o otra cosa que quería, no sé, oh, creo que mi, mi confort general había incre incrementa incrementado mucho hace algunos meses, no sé, pero aproximadamente, a, aproximadamente algunos meses mi, mi confort en el idioma había crecido mucho. Y no tenía que, no tengo que concentrarme o eh, enfocarme en, eh, en conjugar y pensar en las reglas y, eh, y... oh, ah, oye, hay otra cosa que quiero decir. Um, de hecho, no, ¿cómo se dice? Eh, mucha, eh, no sé si... Si tú, cono si tú conoces, pero yo puedo hablar español. No era mi idioma, el idioma que, que aprendí primero. O que trataba de aprender primero. De, el primero era Esperanto. Y de hecho, yo puedo hablar Esperanto muy bien. Y puedo decir cualquier cosa y hablar y charlar. Eh, y eh, hacer Cualquier cosa en Esperanto. Había logrado un nivel muy alto en eso. Pero por, por ejemplo, llevo cuatro años aprendiendo Esperanto y solo llevo dos años aprendiendo es español. Así que era el hecho que mi Esperanto, el nivel de mi Esperanto era mucho más alto que el nivel de mi, de mi español causaba que mi eh, inter que mi cómo se dice mezclar los dos los dos y era muy difícil hablar en español sin el uso de, de muchas palabras de esperanto eh, porque porque si no si no si tú no conoces o si no conoce que pues si tú no conoces que eh, esperanto es más es muy parecido no es muy parecido pero de de verdad es que es muy parecido a los idiomas román eh, romances a los idiomas romances así que es muy eh, así que muchas palabras son muy cerca o son muy parecidos a las palabras o son muy parecidas a las palabras de esperanto eh, así que es más fácil de confundirlos si no si uno de tus idiomas es, no son tan altos, o no son tan altos, no, no sea tan alto. Si sí, sí, uno de los idiomas, eh, su, uno de, de tus, si, si, el, eh, si el nivel de, de uno de tus nivel, o de tus idiomas no sea tan alto. Eh, no, sé, no sé si eso era, era correcta, pero... Así que ahora puedo hablar y puedo hablar el idioma esperanto y español y no tengo, no había muchas, eh, ahora los momentos cuando los dos idiomas se mezclaran se ha des, disminuido, había disminuido 
Así que ahora eh, que puedes ver que definitivamente necesito hablar, necesito eh, hablar un poco más frecuente, eh, frecuentemente para tener la, eh, la habilidad de expresarme eh, con más facilidad. Um, creo que eso era todo y muchas gracias por ver este video y decir eso y All right, I think I'm done with the output. <laughs> I've done what I could do. So as you can see, I can speak. It's not pretty all the time. I get kind of confused. I'm like, uh, I'm honestly just running on like 90% instinct. So it's like, I'm not really thinking too much of it. I'm just kind of like saying it. And then after I say it, I'm like, wait, oof, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't feel right. Oof, oof. So that's why I need to speak more. That's why I need to get more in the habit of, you know, speaking and, and doing all that so and now you can see that's my output and yeah cool now i'm gonna show you more extra stuff okay now i'm gonna give you a quick rundown of like just showing quickly showing you my stats and then going through um shows and then showing you the my kind of quick showing you my workflow on my phone i have my phone connected to the computer so i can kind of show you it easier Okay, so now you can see on the screen I have my stats. So you can see I'm at 923 hours of immersion right here. You can kind of see um, the hours broken down by quarters, and then I have them broken down by months here. This is yeah near the beginning of the year, and actually as of April I've been kind of slacking as you can see here. So I've been kind of you know each day these are recorded in minutes. You can kind of see this green is active, blue is active, listening now that you know now I do yellow is reading orange is uh, output practice or conversation practice um so you can kind of see my breakdown of as the year's been going on so yeah um that's just a quick rundown of that you can also see my active all-time immersion active immersion breakdown so you can see i have all-time active me remember my definition is me watching something is um 464 all-time active listening 206 <laughs> now that i have that is a thing um, all time reading is a little weird. I got used to it. All time reading, 200 hours, a little over 200 hours reading, 30 hours of all time output. So like 30 hours of conversation practice. So as you can see, is is not a lot, not a lot of conversation practice. So I need to really beef that up, bump that up. Um, I'm going to do it a lot now. Um, this second quarter, I'm going to bump up my, um, active listening a lot. So I mean, my, my conversation practice a lot. So that's that. We're going to break that down. Now, here's my shows. So it's just showing like what I've been what I've been watching, what I've been getting through. Um, if you haven't watched Caesar 7 on Netflix, watch it. It's amazing. Uh, bu -bu I don't know. So this is me going through yeah. my shows. So this is basically just yeah. a quick showing you through my workflow. You know, I'm going to click when I'm reading. Like, so I'm just reading anywhere on a bus or whatever. Um, so here's Spanish Dict. Open it up. This is on the Samsung Galaxy. Um, phones on galaxies uh ios you long press it then you boom you get to put this menu up you can there's two different ways of doing it you can do it that way um or this way or um there's multiple ways um anyway don't worry about it then i minimize it up top so if i click it that pops up which is great that means you can read anything so now i have like um my uh so when i'm like you know taking a poop not gonna lie or like waiting on something waiting in an elevator not an elevator god no but you know just waiting on somebody or whatever i have a mix of english and spanish articles so like so about gpus or netflix news click on that right like oh what's this word uh uh okay temporada let's just say that cool i can paste it i copy it from there or i can just type it in click it boom boom Boom, right? Okay, that means season. Okay, figure out everything I need. Boom, done, right? And I can read a bunch of stuff, right? But whatever, it's great. So I re highly recommend that workflow. Works really well. Big, big, uh, big rec recommend, recommend it a lot. So guys, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, as you can see, um, sorry for the mix up. Um, I really want to make sure I changed it to make sure that I can be used as a template for other people that are learning language and are, you know, on the journey too. So like, 
I want to make sure that, you know, my reflect, my experience is going to be as close as possible to someone else who's also learning Spanish. Obviously, it's never going to be perfect, but I just want to, or it doesn't necessarily have to be Spanish, it can be any other language, but I don't want it to be, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to at least make sure that you can use my experience as a reference in terms of hours um, of input and et cetera, and especially my journey um, with learning Spanish as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Appreciate it for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully, I'll try to make it as shorter this time. Hopefully, I did a better job. We'll see when I edit it. And, yeah, appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.